Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Tierno, the last days of Europe. In which, if you'd like to read about the Dominion of South Africa, please go right ahead. And I'll, I'll be honest, I've waited to do this campaign for quite a while. I've played Russia 30 times, I've played the United States quite a few times, Germany 4, 5, 6 times, but not South Africa, because, well, I thought it was going to be kind of difficult, and it probably will be. But we'll see what happens, since we have, well, we have kind of a large border with a lot of enemies, and... I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. There's no guarantees, right? No guarantees. Um, yeah, but let's start off with the focus, shall we? South Africa situation. South Africa is slowly falling into chaos. Civil strife and political gridlock are everywhere. And society itself is slowly fracturing into warring factions. <clears throat> Each, of course, vying for control of the state. The mere fact that we are a monarchy without a king shows how deep our indecision is. No matter our efforts in mending the rift. Every inch of the bridge we build is immediately torn down by those who would only gain from our suffering. South Africa is on the brink of total collapse, and only a miracle can keep it whole. However, in these dark times, few remain brave enough to hope. And at this point, okay, so we got a couple of cool things here. We, we're going to spend. Um, spending more on the military is not a bad idea. Oh my god, we're not as much. But we, something really cool is that we the legacy of Rhodes. The discovery of diamonds at Kimberley, some 100 years ago, has turned a country from a nation of farmers into a nation of miners. And since then, settlers all over the world came to the Cape in search of dreams of endless wealth. But the mining trade is no place for adventurers. The De Beers Corporation, founded by Cecil Rhodes, is now run by Harry Oppenheimer from Cape Town, who has full control of the extraction and trade of the precious stones by working closely with De Beers. Not only have we opened doors in both the OFN and the Unity Pax economies, but now we have the means to turn our country into a proudly developed nation. If we can avoid the ire of the powers breathing down our necks, that is. We get 8 diamonds a month, we have 24 diamonds. Um, develop Cape, we get 1 extra diamond a month. Develop Orange, we get another a diamond a month. Which I think that's awesome, man. And we get some civvies? I love diamonds, man. Why don't we just trade more diamonds in real life? Because they would probably already do. 30 for 2 infrastructure, and we get 1 extra every month. Raise work hours. 12 hour workday. <coughs> Bro, bro, who cares about an 8-hour workday? Let's go 12-hour workday so we can get 2 extra diamonds a month. Lower workers' pensions? Bro, that sounds awesome. Buy guns, of course, attract OFN businesses, ask for OFN stationing. Of course, end pack trade. We get extra 5 extra diamonds, but it has to be about 60%. We're currently at 12%. I'm sorry I'm taking so long with this, but this is really cool. Like, we can lower their anger. That seems really good as well. So, I want this one really badly, but... Let's develop Cape first, because I want that extra diamond. I'm not sure if it's really worth it or not, but... God, if we can just diamond it up, but... The issues we face. Our country is deeply divided. As the Germans like to say, there's a racial question. The, uh, <clears throat> whites, be it Anglos or Bears, have heavily outnumbered by the natives, who are almost entirely deprived of political representation. Despite our government's recent efforts to improve their standing, the Africans still live in poverty and without even basic services. Our reforms, however, have caused another drift, this time within the white community, the Boers. The descendants of the first Dutch colonists deeply believe in racial segregation, and think that what we are doing will only grant the colored the chance to rebel against their masters. This brings us to the most pressing issue. The Germans are funneling support to the National Party. The three Reichskommissariats claim they do it to protect fellow Aryans of Dutch descent against runaway slaves and to establish peaceful relations on the southern borders. But everyone knows that the De Boers are the perfect tool to add South Africa to the list of colonies. No matter what, South Africa will endure. We must. Alone in the wild. <clears throat> Also, we can do a hard mode here, but I'm not going to do that. I don't know what it's going to be like. South Africa, our dominion, stands alone on the continent as a genuine state that is not only corrupt, that is not corrupted by the horrific and brutal ideology of the Reich. It stands alone, free from the influence of the Nazis. Their new colonies either too busy with the exploitation of the resources for export to Europe or with their maintenance of the borders with no the chaos of the rest of Europe, Africa. And though we may stand alone and free, it cannot be ignored that we are not ready to endure more trouble, any more trouble. Within and without, things are coming close to falling apart in our nation. Increasing tensions among our citizens are becoming untenable. The Boers to the northwest are becoming more restless, seeking to impose their vision on us, demanding from us many concessions. It is thanks to Herzog and the National Party that they have a voice in their parliament, and such a voice is becoming louder and louder, bringing predictions of an unwanted but maybe inevitable uprising. And the African National Congress, a party founded by black citizens who are discontent with their living conditions and upset with the way we rule this land, is gradually becoming more daring and defiant. They have support the support of many of their kind, both internally and beyond. In some time, however, no matter how much we may not want for it, want it for it, something is going to happen. Consequences, both foreseen and not, are looming over our heads. Becoming clear to us only after it is too late. We must prepare our future, doing everything we possibly can to preserve our nation as a crown subjects or else succumb to either the enemies within or the nightmare of the Reich. May our dominion stand or die fighting for its freedom. Now, we don't have to spend political power, but I'm going to do it anyways. I wonder if we can actually, like... We got only one by one, but whatever. Reich's last conquests? 
the monarchy debate. The most divisive issue among the white community is indeed the debate between monarchy and republic. This seemingly political question in truth hides a much deeper division running across the entire country like an unintended festering wound. On one hand, we wish to hold the country together in the face of changing times, relying on the monarchy to mend differences and find common purpose with the force of our traditions. On the other, the National Party wishes to subvert our beautiful land into a bad copy of Germany, a racially segregated society where millions live in poverty and fear, and a republican regime is what they need. They know that they hold the majority among the whites, enabling them to force through their so-called reforms. Can't the Boers see the error of their ways? Can't they see that Germany is falling apart because they did what the Herzog is now trying to do? We can't be the only rational ones in this continent. Oh, I want one more. Oh, if we wait one more month, we can get some more diamonds. I'm sorry, we gotta go for it. I want extra diamonds, even though, like, in 18 months, basically, we don't get anything. If we can get one extra a month, we'll make it up by the time the German Civil War starts, but the African National Congress... The ANC, along with the more radical cousin of the Pan-African Congress, is probably the greatest long-term threat to our stability. While the Boers are currently more dangerous, this Pan-African vanguard is slowly building up its forces the more, country, the more our countries plunge into instability. Despite our benevolent rule, many Africans still complain that society is still largely segregated. The army, the civil service, politics, and even the economy are dominated by the white minority for them. Both Anglos and Boers are the enemy just because we are white. Every day, more and more join this organization. Should we fail to conquer the tr their trust with our actions, the ANC will surely try to gain true freedom for the people with force. The quiet American. <clears throat> A tall man stepped out of the plane, carrying himself down the steps, breathing in the South African air. It was something he had long been expected to breathe, to experience for himself. And remember, Edward Geary Lansdale steadied himself, bringing his personal luggage with him, and walked away from the aircraft, forgetting about the noise of the dying engines. He looked forward to, to, do, to doing the things that he had done before, his identity and motives protected by secrecy. He had not thought that he would, be, he would quietly rise up the ranks and find his place here. He had humbled beginnings, especially as a journalist. He maneuvered through the terminal and into the rest of the airport, finally reaching a car waiting for them. The easy part was done as he rode into the back, thinking over the more tedious details of his mission. Edward closed his eyes and envisioned the unit he would forge with his best, with the best this land and his own country would offer. The name wouldn't be too suspicious. It was simply the Studies and Observations Group. But anyone looking closely, especially as so someone like him, would know that it was more than just a mere auxiliary entity. This group would put dread into the hearts of those who would seek to cause South Africa's troubles, especially if they threatened the interests of the free nations. Those were Vice President Kennedy's orders. Ooh. The Nazis will learn to fear them. They would uh, keep trespassing in the valley. If they do, he, then he would sweep the shadows over them. He would harass them, divide them, press them, and take their comrades. He would search for their assets, destroy them, and fade away like a shade in the night. He would, file, he would fill them with terror, even as they arrested or waited for orders. As long as he played, his cards right, and as for as long as he kept the nice unit nice and tight, he could ensure that his objectives were objectives were fulfilled, serving in the shadows, waiting in the midst of wars. The empty throne, desperate neutrality, we have a divided nation, and we're just feeling so good out here, aren't we? We're just feeling just so good. The ANC. Come on, baby, just one more. Just one more, and we have an event here. That's all speech. The white-haired Afrikaner rose from his place as quickly as he could, adjusting his glasses with one hand while the other gripped a sheet of paper, knuckles white from the pressure. All around him waited the rest of the parliament, his colleagues in the NP on his side of the members of the United Party, the ranks dirtied by the presence of the English, reminding him bitterly of the treatment of his family who fo they forced into concentration camps. His eyes regarded them with terrible contempt, especially as he noticed... Seretis Kama, the only black man present observing the proceedings. While well, I obviously share the same feelings his contemporaries had for the English, nobody would doubt that Albert would be more disgusted with the African. Nevertheless, despite the presence of these people, he would have to make his move now. Albert steadied himself as a parliament was called to order, and the representative of each party settling down in their seats. He waited until the speaker to proclaim to them that the floor was free for him to take. Then he began to speak to them, his voice loud and clear. This land does not need to continue its existence under the watch of the monarch. In fact, for the many times I have proclaimed this, especially within my party, it is not necessary to seek the guidance of one. <clears throat> we can rule over this land as a republic with a president at its head. But what is the point of striving for this if this is not put forward to the people? For everyone to have their say, especially those who truly deserve to settle the land, which they have called theirs since they have come. <clears throat> Men from the UP rose in anger, booing at him, raising their voices, but the speaker interrupted them, and the Boer kept speaking more clearly now, overcoming the volume of his opponent, just as many in his own party rose to defend him and to counter their disapproving remarks. I make it clear to you before I make it clear before you now. Realize that there's no way for this parliament to keep on moving forward if it cannot listen to the calls of your people. I demand that a referendum to be considered for the sake of our people, and if this is not put to consideration, every proposal set forth by this parliament shall be halted. This land is our land. This is the Volkstadt, and we are not slaves of any king or queen. <clears throat> my apologies for my voice. The parliament burst with noise and the Boer returned to a seat, proud as the party members shouted down to the opposition, silencing them. 
No fascism or no... Oh, that's fascism. Let's see if Mr. Hassog is bold enough to say that in front of a judge. So maintain the status quo versus talk with the ANC. Um, I'll be honest. I'm going to have to play this twice then. Ooh, we get extra diamonds every month? Oh, there's some over here too. Vote for all the folks. ANC pacified. I'll be honest. Oh, no. The African RK has a group together. <clears throat> I don't know. I think I'll do this twice. I, I think South Africa's going to get more content maybe someday as well. So I think I'm going to go... It is his right as a member of the parliament to insult the crown. Um, how about this one? But... So I apologize if I'm not going to go the route you really want me to take. I apologize, but... Let's do some stuff. Schedule a referendum. <clears throat> Despite our attempts at killing the motion supported by the NP for a referendum on the monarchy, the opposition resorted to total obstruction of the parliament to force her hand. After almost a week of gridlock, when the people started talk, taking the streets in protest, we caved and accepted to vote their proposal in exchange for the return of stability. <clears throat> Obviously, we shouldn't have done that. Now the radicals are causing even more chaos than before, and our hands are tied by our indecision. We dance to the cacophony, and we, are, we ourselves chose the score. We've tried everything to delay the vote in the last months, but the NP threatened us just as they did before, and officially disavowing the consul consultation will be the final nail in the coffin for South Africa. We must schedule the referendum. We can only pray we win. Africa adido. This is not Africa. A small jeep rolled gently onto the asphalt road in the sunny suburbs, sunny suburbs of Johannesburg. Outside, in the far distance, the black line of Drakensberg was visible in the crystal blue sky. Uh, a couple of Italians discussing vigorously. Their black driver was not understanding a word. I don't know, Guatero. Crossing into Ost Africa from the Petersburg Road seems way too risky. I won't get shot in, in the booty by some SS because of your big ideas. Franco, there's no other way. Taking a detour through Bayushan land will cost us days, maybe weeks. We don't have an infinite budget, and we know the rest when we... Giacopetti's sentence was interrupted by the jeep coming to a screeching halt. Outside, a white policeman gestured to stop. Oh, caso. The two filmmakers had arrived with an intercontinental flight into South Africa. Using the first two days in the Black Continent to film a few scenes for the stark realities of racial inequality in the country... Interesting for sure, but both were aiming for something that would give more of an impact. Now, however, in front of them was a small police cordon. On the other side, what looked like a small riot. Miners, dozens of them, waving their picks menacingly. Giacopetti asked a policeman what had happened as a Prosperi was already filming. The cop explained in a thick Afrikaans accent that a small mining incident became the next became the pretext for the wildcat strike. As the miners all black shouted slogans like Africa for Africans, the black gold green flag of the African National Congress appeared, as if out of thin air. It didn't take long for police reinforcements to arrive and disperse the crowds with generous applications of batons, all caught on film by Ciacopetti and Prosperi. After the riot, when the Italian's jeep started to once again make its way down the road, or now the now empty road, Ciacopetti managed to secure and capture one last shot. Rows and rows of small digi homes where black miners lived, from the doors, children watched as their fathers were hauled into armored police trucks and carried away. Onwards to Ost Africa. Oh, what is this? Oh, studies and observations. It's a team of highly experienced American intelligence and paramilitary operatives working under the wing of the CIA. Led by retired Air Force officer Edward Lansdale, they have operated in the shadows all over the globe, supporting and crushing countless insurgencies and rebellions to protect the American way of life. The arrival in South Africa may be a benefit for our struggle against the Nazis, but wherever the SOG goes, trouble tends to follow. Oh, God. Oh, advisors. Advisors would be very good. Oh, I like that. And then recon the northern borders. That's not bad. We'll see what we can do. And then a plan for the future. The future looks grim as it is, and we need to plan so that the situation doesn't get even worse. The matter of the black majority is especially pressing, but it could also become an opportunity. If we manage to secure their support by enacting sweeping reforms, reminding that the true enemy is the NP, we could present a united front against them and their German backers, winning the referendum by a landslide with the African vote. However, not all are in favor of the proposal. There are those, even within our government, who believe in reconciliation with the National Party in the name of a government of the civilized against a native threat. From their point of view, the best way to win the African vote, or African vote, will be a crackdown against a rebel Negroes, followed by a general strengthening of the police to guarantee order. There's no more time to delay. We need to make a choice now. And the defendants dock. Above all, we want equal rights, political rights at least. Because without them, our disabilities uh, will be permanent. I know this sounds revolutionary to the whites in the country because the majority of voters will be Africans. This makes the white man fear democracy. The man speaking those words is Nelson Mandela, a man on trial for four counts of sabotage and attempting to overthrow the government. Charges that will stick and will potentially lead to his execution. He's being tried alongside several other ANC members in a case which has garnered considerable attention. Mandela has used this opportunity to bring attention to his cause. Uh, the opening to the defense proceedings has been a three-hour speech in it. He has justified the ANC's decision to go beyond constitutional methods and nonviolent resistance. <coughs> Citing the increased restrictions placed on non-whites. Instead, they have embarked on a campaign of sabotage against property while developing a military arm for a possible future use. 
But this fear cannot be allowed to stand in the way of the only solution which will guarantee racial harmony and freedom for all, he continues. Is it, it is not true that the true that the enfranchisement of all will result in racial domination. Political division, based on color, is entirely artificial, and when it disappears, so will the domination of one color group by another. The ANC has spent half a century fighting against ra racialism. When it triumphs, as it certainly must, it will not change that policy. This is, this then, is what the ANC is fighting for. Our struggle is a truly national one. It is a struggle of the African people, inspired by our own suffering and our own experiences. It's a struggle for the right to live. He turns to look at the judge in the eyes the last time he'll do so in this trial. During my lifetime, I've dedicated myself to the struggle of the African people. I've fought against white domination, and I've fought against black domination. I've cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all people live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea which I hope to live for and to see realized. But if need be, he concludes, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. The defendant is found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. Hey, at least we got more political power, though. Well, he's in jail now, and then we gotta do a plan for the future. So we'll see what happens. How are... Is it... Oh, that's not looking good. Okay. I don't think I'm... Yeah, we're not even making divisions. God dang it. Oh, right on. Wait. They had seen this smell first. It had been a pretty standard air patrol for the Bite Bridge garrison. Same itinerary as always. Spent a few hours in the chopper, buzzing along the wide Limpopo River, looking for any smugglers who might be trying to cross into West Africa. Simple. Then they had seen the columns of black billowing patch from a patch of green near the Ben Wipe border post. The chopper touched down, the squad stepped out, staring at the gruesome sight. There was a humble, low-slung main house with, made of stone and wood, accompanied by a couple of dozen tiny shacks and a pen of goats. Flames poured from the house as the shacks had clearly been picked over, and what goats hadn't been taken lay bayoneted, bayoneted in the grass along with the family. The remains lay in front of the house, the youngest son still clutching the Afrikaans' Bible in his ruined arms. Settlers, probably hard-up types from Krugersdorp or Blomfontein, just trying to make a new life on the Lowveld. The corporal was almost surprised that there wasn't a covered wagon somewhere on the property. Along the back of the house, painted and garoshe was the name of their killers. Z-A-N-U-P-F. One of the privates spat on the ground when he saw the letters. Never saw them so far south. Jerry must have chased them here. As the corporal examined the scene, he noticed that he spent the, the spent ammo was suspiciously high quality for a bunch of backwater gorillas to be toting around. Another private noticed the blue boot prints leading into the tree line. Curious, the corporal thought. He would like to put this. He would have to put this into the report. The crocodile has eaten the sun. Cool. So that's our tank division. We got two of those, which is not bad. These guys are gonna have to be our bread and butter. Good luck. We're gonna need so much help here, probably. I, don't, I obviously don't want to do hard mobile. You know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. God, it's gotta suck in South Africa. Now, am I talking about real life or right now? Hey, look, we got disgruntled reference. Uh, veterans, not reference. Is anything going down? Expertise is going up. That's nice. Poverty is getting slightly better. Uh, things are actually looking okay for us right now. Maybe not great, but a plan for the future. Assassination attempt. Oh, no. Whoa. Okay, I didn't realize this. It's a referendum. It contains 35% of the voters. We estimate somewhat supportive of the monarchy. A Natal, which contains 10% of the voters, extremely supportive of the monarchy. Of Orange Free State, contains 90% extremely opposed. Um, somewhat opposed to the monarchy. Um, contains 2% of the voters. We establish... Hmm. I didn't realize I had to do this stuff now. Okay. I do want the civvies. I want more civvies, man. I want more guns, though. More military factories would be really nice. Getting this one would be really good as well. But that's going to cost two months. Is that really worth it? Honestly, I don't think that's worth it. So let's not do that one. So let me know. If you've played South Africa before, what would you recommend? Let me know in the comments below. Because I do like reading the comments. Uh, getting Honestly, getting this one done would be really good. We could have 16 diamonds. A civvy... We're researching land doctrine now. We get a civvy. Yeah, let's do that one. Because because I want to get that one done as fast as possible. So, where are we at? So, this is Cape. 59%. 79%. And a tall. It's 10% of the voters. Extremely supportive. Cape has mixed support for the monarchy, which is 35%. So, that's 45%. Which is not very good. Uh, Transvaal. Basically, has low support. Has low support. Very low. Well, we want to play to a gun subation land, maybe? Suppress voters. We divert forces to attempt to suppress Republican voter blocks. We try. Okay, not bad. 50% is not bad. So we'll see what happens. A plan for the future. I'm going to try to go with this one. Talking with ANC. Talk with ANC. Wait, uh, uh, conservative democracy? I'm doing that one, so. Referendum celebrations. Despite the good opposition put up by the United Party, Hatsog's party came out victorious. Now, the streets of Johannesburg, 
a Kopstadt, Praetoria, and all of the great settlements of the Republic explode with cheers from the Boers, who came out to celebrate the referendum. In the corners lit by street lamps, and on the highways free of traffic, the white citizens of South Africa, those who probably call themselves the sons and daughters of those who endured the great trek, are for once free to show off their joy at the victory over the Anglos and the Africans. Although such a referendum may have a chance of failure, or potential sabotage, it is nothing to neglect. The Boers had done it, and the enemies would have to shake their heads, sigh, and retreat into their homes. After all, as victory is celebrated the streets of Sweet Africa, the home of the supposedly noble Boers, witness vile acts in the dark. A scream of, the, of a prostitute here and there rings and fades. Some rumors of young Boers tossing empty beer cans at Africans, or Africans as they sped over the roads come and go. South Africa seems will have to put up with the Boers whether she wants to or not. The police will deal with these ruffians. I'm not really sure what trying to do. Because even if we, like, save it for, like, we don't even get, like, ten a day, so. Um. Were we supposed to lose this? Well, please we'll deal with them. Whatever. Talking with the ANC. Vote for all the folks. The ANC pacified. Radicalize them. I kind of like that. I kind of want to support the monarchy. So we'll see what happens. Maintain the status quo. In the end, the rebellious natives are the biggest threat to our stability. Therefore, a comprehensive effort shall be undertaken to ensure that the ANC isn't allowed to grow more powerful and that the current state of affairs is maintained. The civilized and educated will remain in control of South Africa for the good of everyone, and this will hopefully sway the Boers towards supporting the government, after all. While we'll giving your country to the Germans when the current government is able to protect our way of life just as much. Hmm, we'll see. I guess we're cutting down the debt. That makes me feel pretty good. My goodness, that GDP growth is so nice. <coughs> Track businesses. That's, that's that's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. Um, getting two more off-map civvies. But then again, we go over here to get a civvy and Ooh, that's not bad. Um, I like the millies. I really do. Don't get me wrong. We need at least one millie. So if we're gonna get twelve, spend twelve, get an off-map factory. Two hundred manpower is not really that much. So I'd rather go with this one actually. Uh, give me this one. Give me a million and civvy. 36% is quite bad, but whatever. This way we can actually... S I mean, it does raise or, or lower the amount of deaths that we get, but whatever. Choosing a strategy. Our party has to face a threat which rests within if we want to win the referendum and keep the country free. We have two decisions to make, and not one of these will be easy. The only thing we can do is accept what comes after whatever choice we take. We can consider supporting the ANCs, including them gradually, as peaceably as we can, enter dominion by listening to them. This will certainly win the more moderate and considerate members of, the, that of Congress, and as a consequence, it shall invite the kin to see us in a more favorable light and use their numerical majority to our advantage at the referendum. This will make us seem reasonable and approachable. However, this will inevitably provoke the Boers, especially those who follow Herzog and cling to the promises of his party. It won't be good, of course. Otherwise, we can establish a confrontation in opposition to the Congress and appeal to the more conservative voters. This means concrete police and possibly military action against them. Arrests and raids would be made possible. And this would allow us to try removing from our land one threat from within and removing much of the National Party's appeal to law and order. The results, however, may not be so good. We must anticipate the possibility of these people rising against us, turning to violence, and pulling our nation down into anarchy. The only thing we can do uh, the only thing we can do about it is to be careful. Yet we must be quick about what choice we make. There's no time for us to waste, for not only are we facing down the shadows that haunt our republic with him, but also about to meet the challenges the Nazis to the north of our borders have. If we cannot meet these internal threats properly, we may fall easily into the brace of the unforgiving Reich. We must sit down with ANC. I don't know, man. But this one says we're going to support the monarchy. I kind of want to continue supporting the monarchy. And this one says, suppose. Nice. Maintaining our neutrality. I kind of like that. Let's try that one. South Africa saved itself from German supremacy by carefully playing its cards and refusing to recognize either Elizabeth or Edwards as a legitimate monarch. After the war, we of course kept close relations with the USA as fellow members of the Allies, even though we never joined the OFM, but it's necessary that we keep at least a cordial relationship with the northern neighbors from the pact. And I apologize about this, but we are going down this path for, uh, just, just for the future, just in case. <coughs> as the older... Old order starts collapsing. We need to maintain neutrality more now more than ever, or risk being dragged into a conflict that we have no hope of surviving. Our diplomatic efforts shall focus on reassuring all parties at South Africa as a neutral nation, and won't take part in any hostile move towards any of the world's powers. We can only hope that this will save us. I do want the extra diamonds too, so hey, civil rights, look at that. A turning point in the story of our nation. Impact oh actually ooh, do we Yeah, we won't do that. We have too much anger. Well, it's not that much anger, but yeah, it is what it is. Right? It is what it is. I'm not going to cut down military spending. Actually, we might boost it up because we want to get more output. Yeah, let's get some more output. Screw it.
Yeah, it doesn't hurt us that badly. Cool. Maintain the status quo. Maintain our neutrality. Thank you very much. Anything else here? Um, fun militias would be fun. Raise rook hours. Please, please, please. This would be fun to do as well. But that's, that's not as good. Oh, thank guns. Attract businesses. It's not bad. We try that. Why not? Screw it. We'll do it. Reassure the Americans. That's not bad. And the Reich. Rebuff their diplomats. Gave five extra diamonds. Fortify just in case. Restrict the protests. Oh, yeah, that's nice. As expected, radicals push the Africans to take to the streets and open disapproval of our politics and order. Of, of order. This cannot be allowed. The police will receive strict orders to prevent the, any protests from taking place. Using the appropriate amount of strength to disperse the crowd. We may not like the Germans, but even our government understands the value of, of order above chaos. And we won't allow restless natives to further plunge our already shaken country into civil strife. Effective immediately. From today, all gatherings of more than ten Negroes are forbidden. All transgressors will pay a fine or be sent to the mines for half a year. Only half a year? That's too nice. Why are you so nice to them? Keep building, sons. Because God knows we're not going to have enough strength here eventually. Further investigate the ANC is probably what we want to do as well. What do we have here? Nice. Look at all this stuff. Oh, I love diamonds. Buy packed guns. You know what? Screw it. Maybe I'll, uh, I should do this one earlier, but... I want extra diamond, but that's really that's just not worth it. That's just not worth it. Hmm. Hmm. Not really worth that one. Uh, buy pack guns. 750 is not bad. But I'm going to wait till some of these are more done. Uh, we can't do anything else here. Yeah. Yeah, can't do anything else. That just sucks. Give us another civvy. That'll work for now. <coughs> Excuse me. I forgot that we're still campaigning. Um, Bation's 50. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. 55%, 65%. Has a high. Very high. Mix supports 55 is not bad. Transvol. Let's go Transvol. There you go. 50% is even better. Nice. I forgot that we're still doing this stuff. Further investigate the ANC. The African National Congress has a widespread web of contacts, members, and safe houses, with which they plan to set South Africa on fire from within. We already have enough enemies outside, and we can't afford the luxury of having a snake in our bosom. We shall order the Bureau of State Security to conduct further investigations of the ANC no members, to try and find who their leaders are and where they hide, knowing their location we will strike them with an iron fist. In our hopes, this will cripple the Congress, and the interruption of the new members and funds will weaken it enough to prevent them from causing too much trouble or harm. March Against Imperialism as Johann von Leeuwen woke up from his morning slumber, he got off the bed, gave himself a nice bath, and walked outside to start the usual routine of fawning over the newspaper for interesting tidbits or walking around to satisfy his daily exercise routine. His 60 years of life had been eventful, yet he always felt that there was always something new to experience. He didn't realize something eventful would happen that day. As he was reading the local news, Johann heard thumping noises, loud and numerous, coming from the main road to the provisional government building. Such sounds piqued his interest, which led him far from the confines of his house to a large gathering of about a hundred people. He quickly planned himself among the onlookers to observe the occasion. He saw boards carried by many painted with symbols depicting broken crowns inscribed on it, Down with the Queen, Long Live the Republic. He heard the men and women chant violently, The United Party is weak and frail. They cannot save us from the Germans nor the blacks. We, the National Party, are your only hope. That is beginning to cry out in response, Down with the monarchies, down with the tyrants, up with the Republic. Such rousing cheers from the audience displayed to Johan that he had found himself at one of the many rallies by the National Party, surrounded by crazed fanatics. He realized it as his curiosity faded, replaced by growing disappointment. Another one, said Johan. They always stir up the folk around here. He began to turn away to return to his cozy adobe when the crowd started to move behind the protesters, dragging Johan along with and to a sea of white. You never really know what's coming. A small wave, maybe or maybe, maybe a big one. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's so not good. Can we at least spend it first? Bury those words. So there's really no point to do that area. Uh, 55% is not great. 65% is pretty good. Uh, let's go Bayesian land again. We, oh, we can't. Okay. Natal's pretty good already. Uh, free Natal. A cape. Honestly, let's do a cape again. Actually, how much support is 35% is not bad. Nice. And I'm going to lose that. Thank you. And we did that one. Reassure the Americans. The Americans are our closest trade partners and have taken a protective approach towards us since the last war, of course. They are worried about the referendum and the rising instability within our country, but we need to reassure them that everything is under control, even though we still refuse all their offers to join the OFM. This doesn't mean we can't be friends in democracy. A trade delegation will soon depart for Washington, and they will bring the usual salutes and assurances to the Americans that South Africa plans to remain a free and democratic nation for a long time. We assure Mr. Nixon that this whole continent won't fall into the hands of the Germans. We'll do that one if we can first. The army in high alert was not bad. Let's do a research of the Americans. 
posters appear on the cape. So how can I help you? The man said, pulling out some paper to note the pack's order. Or Packy's order. I'll have some fish and chips along with some water, stated Packy. All right, fish and chips with water, is that all? Yes, that's all. All righty then, remarked the man, returning to the back room, presumably to prepare his food. As he walked, Packy glanced at the wall, noticing the multitude of posters plastered on it. Only the National Party can save you from these black demons. Vote for the MP to help stamp out the colored menace. And watch out for the dark men. Place your trust in the National Party and safeguard yourself. We're written on those posters. Coupled with pictures of violent scenes of murder, theft, and rape, all containing shots of colored people. He eyed the photos of gas at the imagery displayed. Ah, oh, look at old MP, always preaching, started the old man who returned with Packy's food. They've always been a stir, convincing the people that... People that... Convincing people that people like you should be kicked out of here. Little boys came into my shop and asked to plaster the propaganda, and I obliged. Doesn't mean I like them, though. Chuckled the old man. Why did you allow them, then? Asked Packy. They pay me to post it here, and they pay good. A scoffed the man. He looked at Packy for a moment. Of course, you don't discriminate in business, he quickly added. With that, Packy began to consume his food as reflected on the exchange with that white man. As Packy ex exited the shop, he waved to the owner, showing a sign of goodwill. As he trotted along the streets leading to his house, he saw more posters of the same nature, which distressed him slightly. Then he thought about the future, or his people's future for that matter. The MP weren't fond of his kind, so he didn't want it that image to image what they'd do to him if he passed by him. He sighed, wishing it would all roll over soon and he could enjoy his life peacefully. He'd hate to see his beloved Cape Town ruined by those National Party folk. I cannot imagine being happy anywhere else in the world but in Cape Town, and we have no political power. But if you enjoyed this very short video, leave a like, subscribe if you do, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out and see the explosion of African war. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.